Welcome everyone to today's webinar. We generally do a couple of webinars a month, and this is a webinar that is specific to a particular piece of functionality within Club Express. And today we're gonna to be talking about volunteering administration. And we did a webinar a couple of weeks ago where we talked about volunteering from the user standpoint. That showed how users will uh, sign up for volunteering opportunities and pick the time slots that they want to uh, volunteer for. And we're gonna do a very brief review of that at the beginning of this session. But the more you know about how to administer, how to actually set up the volunteering opportunities, to set up categories and such, these are the things that we're gonna be uh, teaching today. And we will actually set up a volunteering opportunity and its slots. And just take a look at the tools that you have as an administrator or coordinator of the volunteering administration module. And we generally do a little introduction like this and then I'll do a demonstration, but first let's just take care of a little bit of housekeeping. The phones are muted and the microphones are muted. And so if you wanna ask questions, please enter them into the chat window. And Samantha will be monitoring the chat window and either raising questions as they come up uh, after the demo, we'll revisit the questions, see if there's anything that wasn't answered, and we'll address those questions. And this is particularly useful for people that are watching a recording of this webinar. And speaking of recordings, the recordings are available on the clubexpress.com cool stuff page. So you click on cool stuff, then you click on the webinars tab, and it'll show a list of the uh, recorded webinars, and you can click on those to see some of the most recent ones. The webinars and the tutorials are also available from within the help system, and the tutorials are on the uh, support tab in your control panel. And all of our videos are published on YouTube, so if you watch any of them on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel and click on the notify button so you can be notified of new content. And finally, if you're using Club Express, and particularly if it's working very well for you, please go to clubexpress.com slash reviews and leave a review for us. And so that way other people can have the benefit of your experience with Club Express. So let's talk about the volunteering module. The module we're talking about today is built in and available to all Club Express installations. And it allows clubs to post volunteering opportunities for which members and optionally non-members can sign up. Typically this is used to help out at club events, uh, clean up or maintenance, perform you know, periodic or seasonal tasks, and even helping in the office. You can just volunteer to do things. Because a lot of the organizations that are using Club Express are volunteer based. So these are organizations with little or no professional staff, and the organizations can use all the help they can get, and it's part of member engagement. And some organizations require their members to do a certain amount of volunteering. In order to maintain your membership, you need to maintain a certain number of volunteer hours. And so we'll take a look at how you can log the volunteer hours and track attendance. So these are all re really good things. So this session is about how administrators and coordinators will set up the system, create volunteering opportunities and time slots within those opportunities track attendance, and do some other administrative tasks. As mentioned, there is a recording of the one done two weeks ago from the user perspective. You'll see it's called Volunteering User Sign Up and Member History. It shows how members and non-members can sign up and how members can uh, see what they have signed up for. There are also two tutorial videos available, one from the user side and one from the administrator side. So you can point your own members towards the user tutorial so that they can see how they sign up, et, et cetera. It's, it's a very nice, fairly short introductory video that shows how they can sign themselves up and optionally, if the uh, opportunity allows it, sign up uh, members of their family or other people for it. It's also important to note that Club Express installations that are set up for aging in place villages, they have a whole set of other tools where you've got uh, member volunteers versus non-member volunteers and contractors and such. That's a whole different module. That's not what we're going to be covering today, but these things actually could be used in conjunction with one another. They are not mutually exclusive. So today we're gonna try to show a bunch of things. 
I'm going to define some volunteering opportunities and the time slots within the opportunities. So first I'll do a little overview of the general user experience. Then we'll look at volunteering administration, look at the admin screen, the results list. We'll spend a little time configuring locations, categories, email reminders, and certain options. We'll create an opportunity and take a look at its email reports and download icons. And then we'll add some slots. We'll actually add four slots to an opportunity and we'll take a look at who's volunteered, We'll look at how to track attendance and how to send email to these people. We are currently logged in as an administrator. I'm going to change this for a moment. I'm going to log out. And volunteering is not currently on the menu, the public facing menu. But if I logged in as a member, as Jenny Cho, and looked at volunteering, which has been placed on the menu, you'll see that she sees uh, several volunteering opportunity. If volunteering was put on the public facing menu and then not logged in, it would only show those things that non-members could sign up for. So at the moment, we've got a bunch of things. We've got paint the clubhouse, we've got spring cleaning, we've got the spring fly-in. And for any one of these things, you can click the down arrow, which will show the list of opportunities, when they are, what the times are, set up for a morning shift, to get tables set up for this fly-in event and uh, do a registration desk and uh, event close and things like that. It's showing how many volunteers are required, who has already been assigned, and the optional thing where members can see who else is already signed up. And you may want to know this because someone would say, oh, well, John's going to be there. I want to volunteer because I want to be there with John. Or you could say, well, John's going to be there. Uh, I don't want to be with John. Or you could say, John's going to be there. They don't need me because John already knows how to do this thing. They may need me on the next day. So that's a, a very useful thing, either to get people to attend or maybe determine when they should best attend or who they're trying to avoid. And the reason I'm showing you this, this is that when we create new events and slots, these are all the kinds of things that we're making decisions on a slot by slot basis. So if I were to Remember, I'm logged in as Jenny. If I were to click over here to say volunteer yourself, it will show her information and she could choose her phone number and all that stuff. And you'll see there's a question that was asked here. What size t-shirt do you wear? Because we're going to have t-shirts for everybody. And you'll see that there's a bunch of slots here and she's already signed up for a few of them. So she can't sign up twice for them, but she could say, okay, I'm gonna be here for the Saturday morning, sign up, and if we choose next, it's showing all of the things she signed up for for this opportunity. She could add a family member and, and all, all these other things that are covered in the other uh, video, but if I choose finish, that is finished. And then she can go to her profile, look at her volunteering opportunity of volunteering history and see what she's got coming up as future opportunities. So for the spring fly-in, you'll see that these are all the things that she signed up for and she can just cancel any of these individual things. She couldn't uncheck them from the other item because you see that she's also got, she's signed up herself and she's also signed up her husband for a couple of things. So you, you have a lot of options here. And you'll also see that in the past, Jenny has logged 18 hours of volunteering service and her daughter, Sally, has logged seven hours. And let's see where they were. So here, it was because on this date, she was monitoring check-in, so she worked three hours here, cleaning the hangar. Yep, on two different days, she worked uh, seven hours each. Um, so that's 14. My guess is that she's got another one here. So you've got all of the hours added up. The seven hours here, the three, the eight hours here, and the three hours here is what gets aggregated up, up into this uh, 18 hours. So when we do attendance tracking, this is where the, the member can see their history and what the logged hours are. Uh, for volunteering here. So 
at least you'll know where we're going when we make some of those configurations. Uh, okay, now I'm gonna switch over and log in as Martin Smith. And volunteering is on the member menu. And when you click on this, there's two ways to get to the volunteering administration screen. One is while you're viewing it, you can come over to the page tools widget and click on edit, or you can go to the control panel. And on the people tab, and I think it might be on the club tab. Yes, it's on both the people and the club tab. You can click on it and it brings you to the volunteering administration screen. And so here is where you set up volunteering opportunities. The search panel lets you show opportunities for all dates or future dates only. It lets you select by category. It lets you select by status, whether an event is published and open for sign up, published but not open yet for sign ups. It could be closed or canceled. So we're just gonna leave it for all status and we're not gonna specify a name. So when I just click on search, we get all of the opportunities. Each opportunity has a name. It's in a volunteer category. It's got a date if there is one. Now, an opportunity doesn't have to have a date. It could just be an open-ended opportunity like paint the clubhouse because we know that that's gonna take years and years and years to get all the rooms painted. So it's, there's no particular date for this. And the status is whether or not it's going to be available on the volunteer screen for people to sign up. And if it's published, they'll be able to sign up. If it's published and not open, it's saying, well, it's coming, it's gonna be on the screen, but you can't register for it yet. The visibility is when people look at the volunteering opportunity screen, who can see this particular opportunity? Is it everyone or members only? And everyone is really only useful if you put the volunteering screen on your public facing menu. And then of course, there are the typical maintenance icons. And if you click over here, a lot of people don't realize, if you click over here, it gives you a legend of what all the, uh, the icons do. And we're gonna go through all of these icons. So before we go and add or edit uh, an opportunity, let's do a little bit of basic configuration. So if we click the configure button here, we can configure locations. And these locations are shared with events. In this case, we're gonna say, uh, well, where is the, the clubhouse? Or where is the hangar? Where is the airfield? And so you can put in all of the information about it. And if there's a special website for it, you could do it there. So you're gonna add a location. I'll go back. If you go to options, here's where you decide whether or not you want to have the ability to track hours for each volunteer. And if you say no, then the box for how many hours are required for each volunteer is not displayed. If you say yes, you can enter the number of volunteer hours per year that your members need to provide in order to maintain their membership. Email reminders. Here is where the email reminder template is done. So this is where you can send an email reminder to volunteers of the upcoming engagement. Normally this gets sent out a day before the slot that they're signed up for. And there was a question before we started this, this session about, well, this doesn't appear in the system emails list. I don't know why it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't occur there, but at the moment it, it appears here. And so you can come in to the template and you'll see it as a check mark to say it's customized. So if I click on this, it says uh, a message from, and it fills in all of the pieces of, of information. And we could go and say, we really appreciate your efforts or something along those lines. And you can customize it so that you can be personal to your members. And if I save that, 
it shows that this has been customized. So if I click it again, you'll see that the information is here. In fact, I'm just make it bold and save it. If you wanna go back to the default template, you just click on the remove customized version and confirm it. And now it's back to the, the standard version. So this is the message that will be sent out a day before a volunteer opportunity. So this reminds your members via email that you're scheduled to appear at the fly-in event tomorrow at two o'clock. So that's where that is set up. Now let's add a volunteering category because it's useful to be able to kind of group things. It helps with reporting and things like that. So if I say volunteering categories, we have a list of categories, which is a pretty standard category list. So I'm gonna add a category here called kids events. So I'm gonna say that this is a kids event and it will show up in here, it's an alphabetical order. Now, anything that is not being currently used by any volunteering uh, opportunities can be deleted. So I could get rid of the flag set up here and it just goes away. But if there's anything actually used in the category, then you can't do that. So you'd have to, if you want to kill a category, I mean, you could just rename it if you want and use it for something else, or you could find those things that are in that category. Like if I wanted to find what's using the check-in category, I could just come over here and say uh, check-in and search for that. And we can see that these are all those opportunities that are using the check-in category. Let's go back here. So that pretty much covers the configuration options. Let us go and add an opportunity. So we're gonna add a volunteering opportunity. So when I click on this, I'm gonna copy, copy and paste from another screen here. We're gonna call this ballooning for kids. We've got this event coming up next month called ballooning for kids, and we need some help with this. So you type in the name of the opportunity, you type in a description. We need help with the registration desk, serving meals, and general kid wrangling. That's gonna be the hardest part. Category, well, it's that new kids event category that we just talked about. And when is it? Well, this is going to be on April 11th. And it also finishes on April 11th. It's a one day event. And is it available to non-members? And we're gonna say yes. But it turns out that the slots are going to be, some slots will be available to non-members and some slots will not. And there's a mailing list category here and we're gonna leave that as volunteer. And because there's already an event on the calendar, we're going to link it to the event. And it's gonna say, what event that's coming up do you wanna link this volunteer opportunity to? And strangely enough, there is already an event on April 11th called Ballooning for Kids. It's got an exclamation point here, so that's, that's the event. And is this eligible for required hours? And it might be that this might be a symposium or it might be a meeting that, and you decide whether or not the opportunity and its slots are eligible for required hours and say, sure, this one is eligible. And who can see this event? It can either be visible to everyone, in which case it will appear on the volunteering screen if that screen is visible to the public. But in this case, we're just gonna make this visible to members only. So this won't even show up on the volunteering page, even if that volunteering page is visible to the public. And we're gonna make the status uh, published open for signups. Because I could just put it on there and say it's not open for signups, but we, we're gonna let it be open immediately. And we're gonna pick a contact person. Don't have to pick a contact person. Let's make the contact person Manny Diaz. And then you decide for Manny Diaz whether or not you want to show their email, 
their phone and whether or not Manny should be notified on registration. Then the next thing is, do you want to ask the volunteers a question? Like the one I showed earlier has to do with what size t-shirt do you want? But this might be a useful thing to know for volunteers. Are you bringing any kids from your own family to the event? This might just get an idea of, you know, how, how your volunteers' attention may be split. Or you could ask any other question, but there's one question. And then this is going to be at the club airfield. And we can decide that we want to show a map link here. And if I save it, it says the opportunity has been saved. It's here ballooning for kids. And it's published, it's open, members only, and we're good. So if I were to go to, let me see if I open this in a new tab. It says ballooning for kids. We've got all the information and there are no slots found. Therefore, it's full, meaning you can't, you can't sign up for it. It could say it's empty, but even though it's published, there are no slots to sign up for it. But you're seeing the contact information, you're seeing the map link that shows that. Um, and you can go from here directly to the Ballooning for Kids event. So you click over here and it winds up showing up here and it automatically put a volunteer link right on the event because you have linked this to the event. So if I click on this, it's gonna bring up, back up to this, uh, the, the volunteering, but it's been filtered down to that one event. Now, we don't have any slots yet, and we'll come back and see what it's like when we have some slots. So I'm gonna go back to volunteering administration, and we'll start defining some slots. Samantha, any questions to this point? We had a lot of questions regarding the emailing option for volunteering. So a lot of questions of, can we change the frequency of the emails? And basically the answer is no, if it's a system email, but we can always use the emailing feature within volunteering administration or blast emailing to send extra emails to volunteers. The emailing feature is uh, built in the same way that the events emailing feature is built in, but you can also use just a blast emailing uh, distribution list to email all volunteers for a specific opportunity. If we come over here and we go to communications and we do an email and, well, let me just add an email here. If we look for the distribution list, we'll get, create a new list everyone who has volunteered for an opportunity. And then you would pick the opportunity here and say, we want to do ballooning for kids. So yes, you could send an email to all those people that have signed up for that opportunity. That's what I was looking for. Thank you, Samantha. All right, so let's go back to the control panel. Let's go back to volunteering administration. Okay, so we've created this new volunteering opportunity called Ballooning for Kids. And if we needed to edit it, we could click on here on the edit icon, maybe say that it's not open for sign up or maybe it was canceled or whatever, but we'll leave that one alone. Here's where we set up slots. Now, by the way, you can always make a duplicate of an opportunity and that's what these buttons are for. So if I click ballooning for kids, what we can do here is change whatever you need to do and it'll save as a new one. So those are useful to do a new opportunity that is like another opportunity and then just go change what you need to change. All right, so let's go and add some slots. So right now there are no slots. So we're gonna add a slot. All right, so the first one I've got here is gonna be from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on that date. And I need four people for this. So I say four. And we're gonna call this 
set up Friday morning. And I'm going to say here, volunteers needed to set up registration, et cetera, et cetera. And it's category, but there's one called setup. That's good. And let's make this available to non-members because this way a member, even though a member may be the only one that can see this, the member can sign up non-members. So you can bring a friend that's not a member of the club. And who should it be visible to? Well, let's make this visible only to members. And its status, we'll say, is published. Uh, or you could say, listen, it's full. I don't care how many I'm asking for. I got enough people. So we'll say that it's published. And can other people see the people that have already signed up for it? That was that, uh, that who list that I talked about earlier. So we'll say only members can see that. And if I save it, we get a volunteering slot and let's uh, let's copy that and so the next one is going to be from 9 a.m and i can just type in the nine here until 4 p.m four p.m on the same date and let's see, I need uh, two volunteers for the registration desk. So I'm just going to grab registration desk here. And put in a, a change it a little bit here. And this one here is called registration desk. And is this available to non-members? No. Registration, it's got to be one of our members doing it. And it's visible to members only, status is published, and volunteer list is already set to members only. So we save that one. And let's do another one. Let's call, let's just copy that one. So this one is going to be from 8 a.m. This is going to be kid wrangling. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. I'll use a clock here. Now let's do about 5 p.m. And we call this kid wrangling. The question is, how many do we need? Uh, let's have five people for kid wrangling. And we'll just put in its thing here, help round up the kids for activities and keep them safe. And let's call this... Um, Let's just call this social events. We could have another chaperone category if we want. And we want to make this visible to members only. Yes, let's let non-members help with the kid wrangling. And save that. And last but not least, let's do a breakdown cleanup. So let's copy that one. And we're going to call this one from 5 p.m., to maybe 7 p.m. And we need four. And we just call this breakdown and cleanup meal area. And it's in the setup category. Yes, we want to make it available to non-members and make the list and such publish the same as before. So. What you can do is you can also change the display sequence. So right now, this one starts at 8 a.m. I added it, the third one, but I really want this to be above that one. So I can change the display sequence and say, I want to take the kid wrangling and move it up one and save it. So now, since these are all open, there are no volunteers yet. So now if I go to the volunteering, and I find ballooning for kids, now there are 15 volunteering slots available. So Martin can come here and pick a phone number, pick his email address. Are you bringing any kids from your own family? 
Yes, an 11 year old and an infant. And so, yeah, I'm gonna be here for Friday morning. And I also wanna be able to do the breakdown and clean up. And if I click on next, it's showing that I have entered and entered this. And then I can add another member if I know that member's email address and first name. Or I can say, I'm going to add a family member because this membership is a family membership. And so we can say, I'm going to have uh, Mary. And I'm going to sign Mary up. I can use the same thing here. And I'm going to say Mary up for kid wrangling and sign her up. So now when I choose finish, the sign up session is saved. We can see if I come back into ballooning for kids, if I go into volunteer, it shows that I've already signed up here. And if I go up here to my profile as Martin and I go into volunteering, I can see that I have signed up myself for two slots and I signed up Mary, who is part of my membership for the kid wrangling. And if I just come in as, um, let's just log in as another user. Three. And now if we just want to have her volunteer for a couple of things for that same event. We can uh, say no. And she wants to uh, sign up for kid wrangling and break down and clean up and go next. She doesn't have any young kids, but she's gonna bring her husband, uh, Daniel, and he's gonna help with the kid wrangling and uh, clean up. Let's do that. I don't you know. like that. All right, now I'm going to go back in as Martin. And if I go into volunteering administration and I search, now I can see under ballooning for kids, again, this is where you manage the slots. Here's where you can send an email to all of the people that are signed up for this you just type in the information and it will send it out uh, right away. Here's where there are reports, the vol volunteering by uh, count summary and by slot and all that and, and attendance. And we'll get to that in a moment. Here's where you can download the list of attendees. So if I click on this and I open this, it will show me the opportunities and um, it'll show me who has signed up, Manny Diaz, the, the contact, who has signed up, what the slots are, and who's registered for this stuff. And you can do things with that. This one here is uh, sharing this volunteering opportunity. If you've already set up social networks, it'll uh, point the link to the opportunity on your Facebook or Twitter page. We have a video on calling, so I think it's called Set Up Social Networking. So you can take a look at that, but this has to be set up first. And if I go into my profile and I look at volunteering, <clears throat> so we do have uh, again, the spring fly in, we can see all that. That hasn't changed. And if we go back into the, where the ballooning for kids, if we go into the slots, we can see who has signed up for things. 
So who has signed up? It says, well, for this spot, the early morning setup, we've asked for four, we've only filled one. But for kid wrangling, we've filled uh, three of the five. So I can come over here and click on volunteers. Uh, this should show a list of the volunteers. And this should show attendance. Obviously, let's assume that this event has already passed. And you see that the volunteers have, have already uh, checked in. So what you can do is you can check in for attendance. And it will say, okay, for ballooning for kids, how many hours did people actually show up and work? So we'll say, oh, Daniel showed up and he actually only worked for six hours. He showed up late. You know, they worked for six hours. Uh, Jenny showed up and she did the whole nine hours and Mary didn't show up at all. So if you save that, that gets recorded and will be recorded to the uh, appropriate members. So that's kind of handy. And then of course you can email just to people, not just for the opportunity, but people just set up for this particular time slot. So if you wanna send out something about, hey, you know, we need you to bring gloves uh, for the kid wrangling or duct tape and chloroform or whatever you need to do to keep the kids quiet, you can uh, send out a, a message just to the people that are registered for this particular slot. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show. If I, if I go back to the member menu and I go into volunteering and I look at the ballooning for kids, we should have a who next to each one of these. So if I click on who, you'll see that Mary Smith, Daniel and Jenny have already volunteered for that one. For this one, it's just Martin. And for this one, it's Martin, Daniel and Jenny also. So this gives you an idea of how to create volunteering opportunities, how to configure the general module, and how to create slots within the opportunity that your people can volunteer for. So back to Samantha, do we have questions? And if you have other questions, now's the time to speak up. Um, we're getting a lot of questions on where you can buy chloroform. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, so we, it was a really, really active chat. So a lot of people, uh, we had talked about this previously, a lot of people were asking about the emails and we went over that. We talked a little bit about the reports that you have available. One of the questions that just came in, is there a way that people can mark their own attendance for a volunteering event, like a sign-in page? I don't, no, no, there isn't, don't yeah, that. there nope. isn't a sort of self checkoff. Right. Um, for, for events there, you can do an attendance, a check-in desk, but not for volunteers. The administrator has to be the one to say, yes, you showed up as opposed mm -hmm. to you saying, Hey, I showed up. I went to class. I, you know, I, I was there. No, the, the, the teacher has to mark your attendance in effect. What about adding volunteers that showed up, but didn't register? So I guess you, it would depend on if the, the volunteering opportunity is still open for even an administrator to register a volunteer. Right. An administrator could just say, if it says volunteer yourself or volunteer others. So you could just add another member or add a non-member. When you add a non-member, it's going to ask you for the information. If the sign up for the opportunity is not closed, the, the administrator could just sign somebody up. So you could just do it like, like any other normal volunteering, even if it's for the volunteering opportunity, that's, you know, we got another kid wrangler here. Good. I'll, I'll sign you up. And that's fine. Even though we've been wrangling for two hours, we can use the help. So just as a matter of curiosity, uh, if people would uh, just type into the chat window, what kinds of things are you using the volunteer module for? I know that in, in the theater that uh, I'm a member of, we're using it as a really easy way of uh, having people volunteer to usher for particular performances. This is different than uh, this ushering module. Of, this is a complete ushering module that was done for a group in Chicago, but it, this is a local theater here. And rather than the usher captain just assigning people to usher for particular performances, people can volunteer and say, I want to usher on Saturday night because I and three friends want to usher together and this goes towards our ushering requirement. 
the opportunity is, is specific to that particular performance. Uh, so that's something that the usher captain can say, oh, we already have three of the five ushers that we need. They've already volunteered. I will fill in the other two ushers and just assign them. So that's one implementation. Uh, Samantha, is anybody uh, typing in what they're doing? Yeah, there's a huge variety. So horse shows, archery shoots, off-road motorcycle events, charity events. We must have a few people from, I'm going to guess, the League of Women's Voters because there are a couple of voter registration events, commitments to build projects to raise money, auto shows, Indiana State Fair, door workers at member meetings, judges for contests. Ooh, a thousand-person bicycling event. Uh, yeah, so we it looks like most people are using the module and uh, or at least do have volunteering opportunities that they can use it for. So this is exciting. Yeah. Well, it's great to see that it's being used. I hope what we've covered today gives you some ideas and maybe answer some questions or maybe surfaces some features that maybe you weren't aware of. Any other questions pending? No, it doesn't look like we do have questions. All right. Well, then in that case, thank you everyone for attending. Stay safe and we'll see you at the next webinar.